Hi everybody, it's Michael here with part two of my series on how to calibrate the extrusion on your RepRap 3D printer. In part one, we covered how to calibrate your E-steps, which I called kind of a coarse or a gross calibration. And for the purposes of what we're gonna be doing today, I'm gonna to assume that you've already done that. So if you haven't already calibrated your E-steps, I suggest that this would be a good time to go ahead and pause this video, go take a look at part one of the series or some of the other really nice videos that are on YouTube on how to calibrate your E-steps. So we'll wait for you to go do that and then come right on back. Okay, welcome back. Now today I'm gonna to be showing you my favorite method for really fine tuning my extrusion. And this is something where you can get the extrusion really specific, so it's, it's really extruding exactly the right amount of filament. And this is something that, quite frankly, I do anytime I'm using a new roll of filament or I've changed anything, is I will go ahead and run a couple of these calibration tests to get everything just exactly where I want it. And then I'm gonna make some notes. I'm gonna create what I like to call the magic number and there are many ways you can put the magic number into the system, but the important thing being that for each roll of filament that I use, I go ahead and determine this number and then associate that with the filament, and I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways that you can do that. Okay, we'll get to that shortly. Right now what you see is on my Maker Farm 8-inch Prusa i3, I am printing my personal favorite calibration object. Uh, this one is from a package called SFACT, which is a repackaging of, a, um, of an application called Skeinforge, which is another slicing program that I, as far as I know, it really hasn't had a lot of development work on it lately, but uh, SFACT does have a lot of really nice uh, calibration objects packed into it. And I will put a link to this particular one in the notes for this video. The crucial and important thing about why I'm using this particular shape is quite simply that it is gonna generate us a shape that is exactly one wall thick. So essentially what that means is we're gonna be laying down one bead of filament per layer, and it's just gonna stack up, and it's just gonna be one, uh, like I said, one wall thick. And so we're gonna be measuring what we get in our printed shape versus what the G-code is telling us that it's supposed to be, and then we'll be making some adjustments. Okay, just to back up a little bit and show you how I prepared that shape to be printed, uh, for our needs here. Uh, we are back in Slicer. And at this point, I think it's uh, worth mentioning that the method that I'm showing you, as far as I know, was originally developed by Alex RJ, uh, whose real name is Alessandro Ranalucci. He also goes by Sound. And he is actually the original developer of Slicer. Uh, I just want to give him a shout out. Obviously, he's a brilliant guy who has uh, done a lot for the RepRap community, and I just wanted to thank him for everything that he's done, not the least of which is given us Slicer and given us this, um, uh, this method that I'm about to show you. Now, I have made a little bit of adjustment to what Alessandro originally uh, suggested, and I'll let you know what that is, but I think actually I, I found a spot where I could simplify it just a little bit. So in any case, the uh, file that we're using is underbar 40 by 10stl and uh, again, I will have a link to that in the, uh, in the notes for this video. And here's what it looks like up on the plater. Now, everything else that I've got, all my print settings and everything are pretty much standard for the type of filament that I'm gonna be using. This happens to be a PLA that I'm using today, but that's not really important. The, what I wanna bring your attention to though is here in filament settings, what I'm gonna suggest you do is leave your filament diameter just at the nominal uh, diameter. So in this case, I'm using three millimeter filament. So rather than measuring it, uh, I'm going to say, just go ahead and leave that at 3.0 millimeters. And of course, if you're using 1.75, leave it at 1.75. And the other important thing is this extrusion multiplier right now, we're going to leave that at one. Other than that, all your, uh, your filament temperatures and your bed temperature should be just whatever it is that you normally use for the type of filament that you are going to be printing with. Okay, with that said, we're gonna go ahead and just uh, generate some G-code like we normally would. And then I wanna open that up and show you just a couple of things that are going to be important. Okay, now here we are in our G-code file and here's what I wanted to bring your attention to. This value right here, perimeters extrusion width equals 0 0.67 millimeter. Now, this is what it happens to be on mine. Yours may be different, but the key thing is this is the first value that we wanna really make a note of because that's gonna be what the width of our 
uh, the walls of our printing object are supposed to be. And we're going to see how close uh, we get when we actually measure the printed part. Okay, now that our part's done printing, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this. Now what I'm going to do is use my trusty uh, digital calipers, and I'm going to try and take a measurement, ideally, of just the top layer. Uh, it's going to be very difficult for me to get just the top layer, but I'm going to try and take as small a bite as I can. And what I'm going to do is take a measurement on each of the four sides, and we're going to average those together and, uh, and compare that against the value that we got from our G-code. Now, you want to be very careful when you do this to make sure that you are uh, measuring at the top of the object, because if you measure at the bottom, of course, that first layer has a little bit extra material extruded in order to guarantee it adhesion. So what we're going to do is, again, just take the, uh, the as close as we can get to the very top layer. Now, the reason I'm doing just the top layer is that if I take a big bite like this, I could get some cumulative error if, the, uh, uh, if all the layers aren't exactly lined up. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and try and get just the top layer possible or as close as I can. And what I got there on this one is 0 0.70 millimeters. On this side, I get... 0 0.70 millimeters on the base, I get 0 0.70. Okay, well, this is so far very consistent. And on the top part here, on this curved section, I'm going to be very careful to try and get as clean a reading as possible and not be uh, offset a little bit. So I'm just getting the just the width of the extrusion. And what I have there is 0.75. Now, what we're going to do then is take those three or those four numbers. And just like they do in the Olympics, we're going to throw out the big one. Okay, now that we've got our numbers, we'll go ahead and pop them into the calculator. And like I said, we're going to throw out the big number just like they do in the Olympics. So we're left with 0.70 plus 0 0.70 plus 0 0.70. Add those all together, we get 2.1, that of course is 2.10, and then we divide it by 3 in order to get the average, and we come up with 0 0.7. Now, if you recall from uh, the previous video, we're going to do the same math that we did there, the same transformation. So the modifier that we want is going to essentially be we're going to divide what we uh, want by what we got. So in this case, what we wanted was 0.67, and we're going to divide that by 0 0.70, and what we get is 0 0.95714 roughly. What I'm going to do is go ahead and just say that is close enough to me for 0 0.96, or we'll call that also 96%. And this, my friends, is what I like to call the magic number for this particular roll of filament. What we're going to do is apply this modifier to one of several places. Now, make sure also that it's only one of those places that we apply it to. Otherwise, we can get in other kinds of trouble. But for now, what we're going to do is make a big note that what we have is 0 0.96. Okay, now we're back in Slicer, and I'm going to show you the first method that I use for introducing our newly computed magic number into our printing setup. I'm going to go up to Filament Settings. This is the tab we're interested in. And as you recall, when we were here before, we left the uh, diameter of the filament and the extrusion multiplier at their default values. And the one we're interested in right now is the extrusion multiplier. And we're just going to go ahead and enter the magic number there. Now, if you wanted to, you're certainly more than welcome to enter that entire eight-digit number that we came up with. I find it works perfectly well just to go to two significant digits. So I'm going to put in 0.96. And that is how we put the magic number into our, uh, into our, our system. Now, what you could do is either just go up to the plater, generate some more G-code, uh, print it again, and see how it works. Now, let's assume that it did work correctly, and you do want to actually save a profile. What you can do, Slicer's got this really cool function where you can actually save a, um, a particular profile if you want. And that way you know that, you know, let's say this is the red ABS that you got from uh, Fry's Electronics or something. So maybe you could say this is Fry's red ABS and then save it, and then it's going to have uh, it's going to be available just right from this drop-down menu. I'm not going to do that right now, but just know that you can because it's pretty cool. Now I know there's a lot of you that love working with your LCD. Now that actually is going to be the other way that you can introduce this magic number into your printing. Now again, like I mentioned before, and this is a very big caution, only put the magic number in one place because what we're doing here is reducing the amount of extrusion that we're doing by a little bit, and if we do it with the LCD as well, then we're reducing it twice and we're not going to get the results we want. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, I'll show you how to put it in on the LCD. 
Okay, if you want to use the LCD method to put in the magic number, uh, one thing that's very important to realize is that you have to wait until the print has actually started, otherwise this menu is actually not even going to be visible. So what's happened here, as you can see, it's just now started. It's actually still printing the skirt. So I'm going to go down here to Tune, go down to Flow, dial that back to 96, which is the number we determined as our magic number. Click that. Now you can see we are flowing at 96%. Go back up to main and info screen and just wait for the rest of the print to come out. Okay, now we've just finished our second print. So this is our post calibration object right here. And uh, again, we've applied the correction to the print and then gone ahead and printed it. And we're gonna do the same test that we did before. We're gonna look at all four sides and we're gonna see how close we came. Now you will recall that on the pre calibration object, we had 0 0.70 millimeters uh, average on each side and we were looking for 0.67. So let's take a look now and see how we did. We're gonna look at the same same four sides and I see that right here I've got point, oops, I got a little bit big bite there. Now I have no bite and 0.67, so we're right on on that one. On this side, 0.67. And then finally on the base, I'm sorry, not finally, but this is where we're going to be looking next. Oop, that's a little missing a bite there. 0.68 on the base and then on the top part, which has always been running thick, we have about 0 0.70. So we're still a little bit thick on the top, but we're down quite a bit from where we were. And we were pretty much spot on on the rest of these. So we'll throw these into the... Uh, equation and we'll see exactly how close we are. Okay, we're back at the calculator one more time and we'll go ahead and just put in those three values we just collected from our uh, post calibration object. We had 0.67, we had 0.67, and we had 0.68. And those total up to 2.02 .02, and we'll divide it by three to get the average. And the average measurement we got there is 0 0.67 and three bar or three forever, 67 and a third. Now that you can tell just by looking is pretty close, but we'll go ahead and run the whole thing just to make sure. And we'll take what we wanted, which was 0.67 divided by what we got, which was 0.67 and a bunch of threes. And what we end up with is 0 0.995. So we are within uh, one half a percent of our desired value. Now, if you really wanted to, you could go ahead and iterate this again, run the whole process one more time and see if you could get it a little bit closer. And quite frankly, I think that'd be really cool if you did it. And if you could get it to be just exactly spot on, that would be awesome. For me, uh, within one half of 1%, I'm gonna say that for me personally, that is close enough and I'm fine with it. And there you have it, everybody. That is the method that I use to calibrate the extrusion on all of my 3D RepRap printers. And it works great for me, and I hope it works great for you as well. Once again, I want to say a big thank you to Alessandro for creating Slicer as well as creating the original version of this method. And uh, I will put a link to his original description in the uh, description of this video as well as a link to the calibration object that I used. So that's it for part two. Uh, part three is coming up. There's gonna be another method that's actually even easier than anything we've looked at so far. And on the face of it, it just kind of seems kind of insane. It's not a method I use all the time, but it's just too much fun not to, uh, uh, not to at least acknowledge. So that'll be coming up here shortly. So once again, thank you very much for watching. If this video has done anything for you, I encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. It really does help me out. And once again, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.